Um, and nine, five, two, two, three, two, oh, four, oh, six. Uh, there is my uh, office number. So you can always, you know, if you have a question for me, you can go right there um, and kind of let people know what you're doing and how you are, so forth. Um, I'm gonna do a quick round robin um, just to let everybody introduce themselves. Um, my name is Vicki Mikeworth. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a math geek. Um, I'm your favorite math geek. Um, I'm somebody that likes numbers and uh, do a lot of business consulting. And um, I've been hosting this group for now almost 20 years. So uh, glad to have you. Uh, a mastermind group is really the idea that, you know, when many minds come together, a new mind is created. And we have our other uh, leader, which here is Karen Karsten. Karen, I'm going to let you start off and uh, just quick introduce yourself, and then we'll just kind of go around. Um, okay. Good morning. I'm Karen Karsten. I'm the executive director of Rich Chicks, and we are the, the group that kind of puts this group together. Mickey leads it. She's been leading it for, I don't know, 100 years. <laughs> right now, it's kind of, things are in flux. I, I my clients are really trying to figure out what to do next. And at this time of the year, usually I'm putting together the vision board class, but we can't do that. So I'm figuring out how to do it digitally. I've got that about half done and I hope to have that <clears throat> ready the end of the month because you all need a new vision. <laughs> it's my favorite class. Well, good. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of go round and round. Brian, we haven't seen you in a while. How are you? <clears throat> I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, big twists and turns for 2020 because of everything, but uh, uh, with an amazing set of coaches and um, partners, things are looking pretty fantastic for 2021. Good, good. Okay, I'm going to go to you, April. Welcome. Hi. I'm April Monica and I am just launching, like I just got certified to be a sex, love and relationship coach. So I am looking for my first clients and that I'm brand new. Good, well, welcome. You'll love this group. Thank you. They're, they're, they're pretty fun people. Jamian, give us your update. Hi, I'm Jamian. Um, 2021 has been good. 2020 went out with the bang and I'm just plugging away at getting these the second venue open. Right, right. Lots to do. Lots to do. Broke ground in Memphis too. Cleared out three acres last weekend. Oh my gosh! Is that in your family's land? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a what a that had to be really great. Yeah, yeah. And we haven't seen it in probably in 15 years most of the acreage of there since my granddaddy has passed away and it's like trees and vegetation and stuff, but I got lots of wood. <laughs> lots of wood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Lots of wood. Stuff. So it's like Good. really cool. Good. Good for you. Uh, Sandy, give us your update. Hey, um, I'm Sandy Cleland. I'm a residential real estate agent with Remax results and um, had a good year. I mean, and the year is starting 2021 is starting off really good. So just you had your best just, year, your best I, year. I had my best year. <laughs> yeah. Very happy. Yeah. So just keeping working and, you know, going to add some more things to uh, what I've done and have a good life. <laughs> good. good. Yeah, you. Ah, you're sitting down. And I'm unmuted. Uh, my name is Kathy Corgard. I run Everything I Am, Everything Beautiful. Uh, I do selection design for homeowners and contractors to uh, ease the burden of making selections on your own. Um, 2020 was tumultuous. It was, um, some parts were so high. Watching my business grow has been amazing. Um, it's not where and I wanted to be. You were worried. Yet. You were worried. I'm so worried. I'm still looking at like, should I get a second job? Um, but watching it grow and, and making big strides to where I was um, the year before, I paid off um, $20,000 of debt, um, business debt. So I'm, I'm feeling really, really happy about yeah, that. Yeah, we will do a group class for that. Um, yeah. 
that leaves me with nothing um, left, but it, it leaves me in a really great jumping off point for 2021. So I'm right. hopeful. And if the housing market continues, then um, I'll have business, right, Sandy? <laughs> right, right, right. We love that. Tina, give us your intro. Hi, I'm Tina Krebs. I'm a real estate agent as well with EXP Realty and the DeRoche Realty Group. Um, I've been in business for about four years. And yeah, the housing industry is just, it's phenomenal. I, I have had my best year in 2020. Didn't even skip a beat. Um, and starting off 2021, pretty good too. So yeah, I think anybody that's related to uh, the housing industry is going to do well in business because I don't, I don't see it going anywhere. And I love this uh, atmosphere, this learning way of sharing things and sharing successes. So thanks for inviting me, Mickey. I really appreciate it. We are glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Janet Mills, give us your update. I'm a graphic designer for print, and I've been plugging away and fired up for 2021. Good. All right. Uh, <coughs> Trish, I've been waiting. How are you? Hi. I feel like you should- Hey, sorry. What's that? I feel like you should sing your intro. We've missed you horribly. Let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, you guys and gals. Uh, I'm Trish. <laughs> <laughs> I had trouble getting on. Sorry, my, my uh, network connection is kind of unstable here. Um, I am a singer and an entertainer and a mental health advocate. Uh, I guess the question was, how was 2020? Um, it was uh, actually largely unaffected by it um, because, well, I wasn't working that much anyway. I had kind of taken a sabbatical, mental health sabbatical. So um, it was a good year for my husband in the housing industry. Um, and uh, I've just been home and staying healthy, taking care of my mom and working on a, uh, a show with my uh, keyboard player and collaborator uh, that combines um, music, entertainment, inspi inspiring uh, conversation, storytelling with music. And we're actually gonna have a kind of a pre entry concert uh, on social media on uh, Martin Luther King Day that, that evening. So I'll keep you informed on that. Good. I'm really glad to be here. I've missed you guys. I've missed oh, you, Mickey. We've missed yeah. you too. I <laughs> oh, clap just to have you back. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm really glad to be back. Thanks. Yeah, you worked harder for this. Yeah. Janine, Thanks. another face we haven't seen in so long. How are you? Hi, I'm so happy I can be here. Um, Wednesdays, my husband has offs. And since I've been home with my son this year, most of the year, I had to schedule like uh, on location shoots on Wednesday morning. So it, it conflicted with this all the time. So I'm so glad that oh. I can be here. Right. Um, we don't ever mind you making money. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Um, it's been a hard year. I've been a wedding photographer for 15 years. And as everybody probably knows, weddings didn't, weren't much of anything this year in Minnesota. Um, I uh, have a studio which allowed me to transition into portraits, which has been a fun and exciting challenge and um, really rewarding. And I know, I know I wouldn't have made this jump as quickly as I would have. Um, thanks to COVID, I got to jump in with two feet right away. <laughs> yeah, and here you are. And it's been really a great year for you. It has, it's yeah. Personal growing, yeah. lots of things. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, well, I'm gonna dive into our content um, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Um, again, uh, Danny is, I'm not ignoring her, um, but she had to, she's got to go into an appointment. She kind of texted in, but her big news, um, is that she, um, she got a website. Up. So I'm excited to have her share that with us. That'll be a little bit fantastic. So our topic today, uh, is about building a super fan bed, uh, PowerPoint, yes, okay. Uh, building a super fan fan base. Now, when you guys are looking at fan bases, I want you to think about it as super fans. We're gonna talk about fan funnels, but I want you to think about super fan. Those are people that are kind of a little bit crazy for you. And um, they we've used them a lot. Uh, for those of you who have followed our uh, the growth with, um, with the ice cream company, right, that that has been, that's how we built her from, with no budget and no um, outside 
um, advertisement. So a super fan base is gonna be very helpful for you. You guys have that superpower of the chat box. Now I can't see the chat box when I'm sharing my screen. So, but as soon as I'm out of that, you can just keep typing in and I'll address them all. Um, or you can unmute and ask a question. Um, but the first one that I have for you is I'm gonna pre-warn you, those of you who love to write, uh, that there's 11 questions in here. So you will have some writing to, to kind of take home. Um, so think about that. And this is not the first count <laughs> on that, which is where do your fans esoterically live? Um, here's the great part that I will tell you is that last night I recorded the audio of this. So if you're panicked that you didn't get it, we will have Karen's um, video, but we also have the, you know, that fast audio. And I like those audios. Those are on that secret spot um, that I've sent other classes in. So it's not open to the vast public. It's really just open to you guys. Um, but again, when you think about an esoteric, where do your fans esoterically live? I, I would think about it, right, that this is kind of a smaller group that's specialized. They have a really defined knowledge or interest level. So I would think about that like a coffee connoisseur, right? That some people just want to go deep on a subject. And that's where you're going to look for your super fans. So think about what your subject is. Sometimes they're just way too broad, design too broad. But design specifically kitsch kitchen, now, now you've got a place to have a super fan group. So you're looking for that kind of esoteric, that smaller grouping with real specialized knowledge. Um, again, I would just kind of put your, put your one through 11. I've marked the slides so you won't miss them. Uh, and a lot of those questions are gonna come right at the very beginning. And we'll kind of talk about what it is. And your first question is right here, right? When, whether you're looking at a fan lens or a super fan lens, whether that's, there's, there's many social media outlets that you can go on to. You can go Facebook, you can Instagram, right? The new big hub right now that everybody's freaking out about is, um, is Clubhouse um, and that you have to have a private invite to get to, which is how Instagram got started, which is how Pinterest got started. Um, but I would think about how does a fan impact your business model, right? That somebody who's interested in what you're doing, how does that impact your business model? So for some people that is that they wanna be known, that they want a message to get out. Right, so Trish, for you, you're always, your fan base is really about getting a message out and getting people to communicate or open up or normalize a subject matter. Um, Jamie, and for you, right, the impact on yours is that people can see what you do and, and choose to have a celebration that they hire someone else to do, not just that they do it themselves. So when you think about that, I, I really want you to think about what is it for your whole business model? And um, these are people, again, right? They're devoted. I believe they have value, but I also believe they give them. And they also help you keep you really interested in your path because they're gonna bring something to the table. Um, so I'll use Ashley um, from, this, from the ice cream company again, is that people send her ideas for flavors all the time. So she has to constantly be reinventing, constantly being creative. Um, so many of your people that are interested in what you do will have creative ideas for you. Um, Janine, when I think about you, it's really like sites, right? People love to photograph in locations. So it may be, and you have a list, I think, right? You have a list of locations that you are like, hey, we can do it this way. So there are many ways when you think about that. And here's your question number two, number three, and number four, right? What, um, what do they think about, right? What, what are they thinking about? And, um, and, the, and a big question for you is like, you know, are you a fan? Do, do you have a fan thing that you are interested in? And I would think about how you are fanning um, because that's going to tell you a lot about how you will curate content because a lot of times we will fan the way we want to be fan 
Um, so if you are somebody that's going to check out all their new stuff, that you are very visual, that you want to hear their podcast, you want to know all of the new information that they have, right? My friends who are really techie, they, they are going to fan um, in, a, in a category D. So I don't know if, you, if I told you guys this, but I ordered a Cybertruck, um, a Tesla Cybertruck. So I joined a Cybertruck fan group. And those people are crazy. Uh, they measure the insides of their, uh, you know, these are super, super, super fans, right? They've, they've, they've <clears throat> taken the, um, they've taken the, the, the measurements of the truck and they're, they've measured them on their, on their um, garages and they put videos in of what it would look like if their truck was actually built and moving in. I mean, people are very creative because they're passionate. They're passionate about something. Oh, thank you. Yes, so good. Think about what How you're are you? passionate about. Hey, Karen, you're not on mute, by the way. Okay. Uh, I can't so be. Thanks, thanks Michael. Um, yeah, he, brought, I, he brought me my coffee. I know. We, we all would love that service. Uh, think about where your fans play. Where do they eat? Where do they shop? How do they celebrate? Right? That's question number four. Where are your where are your fans playing, and what are they visiting? So it's not it's different than saying, "Hey, here's my core customer." It's really who are those super fans? Because super fans have another role in the world. They're they're not. It's not defining your core customer. It's somebody who's very much interested in the work that you are doing. So how do you get people very interested in relationships, right? So how do you get people very interested in certain kinds of real estate? Um, so for those of you who are selling real estate, you may be selling residential real estate. You may be selling only farmland. You may be only looking at hobby farms or, you know, there, there's so many pieces that are there. So really giving people that information. And sometimes super fans are aspiring that there's somebody that wants to become something, that they aren't there yet. So um, I use hobby farms as an example. I can't tell you how many people, like I, I, I'm somebody that you may have noticed, I like farm animals. Uh, I like animals of all kinds. So that's interesting to me. I want to think about what it would be like to have a farm like that. Can I manage that? No but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate the work, show up for what they're saying, be deeply interested and committed to what they're talking about. So um, my favorite part of, of a fan base is that you get to play with them, that these are people that you can celebrate, that you can enjoy that relationship, um, that, that for you, I, the reason I think it's worth investing in is because I, I, I like the play. So when you look at question number five, which just popped up on your screen, um, is what, what, what do you want to do? You know, what do your fans want to do with you? And um, it's pretty easy when you think about my fans uh, in general, of people that know me, right? It's pretty easy. What do my fans want to do with me? They want to play with me right? That, that let's go do something. Let's see something different. So think about what your fans would do with you. Do they want to go on a tour with you? Do they want an invitation to a party? Even if that's a virtual party, right? So Jamie, and that would be like you, right? You know, come sit at my table. Here's the table's decor that we have. If it were Danny, um, who's not on here right now, it would be, you know, let me invite you to my unique floral arrangements, right? So, you know, how do I bring you to something um, that, that Kathy, I would think about, you know, bringing someone into that kitchen. Um, let me, let me give you reasons to love tile combinations. You could be, you know, someone who's just crazy about tile combinations. Um, and I bring that up because she sent me one the other day that she knew I would like. Um, and that's another thing that you would do for fans, right? that she knew I would be a fan of whatever she put out. And that makes it a lot more fun to create, right? So when you're thinking about your fans, <clears throat> I would think about question number six, right? 
And yes, there's two questions on this page, but it's really the second one, right? What makes you special? But why would you, why, why? Why do your super fans want to know more? Right? And that's kind of the question you're going to be asking yourself. Why do they want to know more? Why would somebody want to know more about tile? Right? Kitchen tile, bathroom tile, outdoor tile, you know, tile to put the dog on, heated tile. There's a million ways you can talk about tile. And, and it's such a mundane sounding subject, but somebody that can make it interesting is going to be very compelling. But they also have another thing that magically happens which is that those people get something attached to that, that you as the creator will receive more um, in the world uh, towards your business if you have a fan base, that you will get more. You'll get more if, if it's a venue, then you get, you know, that, that these, this is my thing at this venue and this is what I do. Therefore, I want these things from you as a partner. It will give you partnership. It'll give you provenance. It will also give you um, a place to, to, to build financial partnerships. So um, we talked about a fan funnel. So like a sales funnel, right? It's people that are kind of gonna get to know you, but it always leads to something. And a, a fan funnel is there to lead to the super fans. Um, if any of you have noticed that um, <clears throat> that Facebook has often now randomly decided who your super fans are and they started giving them badges. So the people that are clicking on your content, you don't even have to find out who they are. Face, if you're on Facebook, they're going to automatically flag them for you. And if they're flagging your super fans, um, then I would really uh, start to look up who they are because that's going to give you a lot of information. And then I would also think about, right, you know, what are the invitations? How do super fans interact? And then what's the shared experience of fans and super fans? So a fan is really just, you know, they're just looking at it, but a super fan is interacting. They want to be there. I can be a fan of an iPhone by just buying one. But I'm a super fan when I get into all the nerdy content and I talk to other people about it and that we share things about iPhones, right? Of, oh, do you know this app? Can you do this? Can you do that? Right? We're talking about it. We're interacting. We want a closer relationship. A fan is just somebody like, yeah, I'm only going to buy that kind of phone. So that's what we're there to do is to bring a fan into a super fan. And the first thing that, that everybody hits me with when I bring this up is, oh my gosh, this is so time consuming. I still don't have my marketing plan. And, 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 and I would think about it not like, a, I would think of it like a stopwatch, not a time clock. Like I don't, I don't need you to put in this enormous amount of hours into this every day. Um, 30 minutes is a lot of time on any media platform. And, you know, I think, Janine, you've done a lot of media work for your own stuff. I think you can also attest to that, that 30 minutes is a lot of time when you have a plan. Mickey, um, yeah? someone's trying to, Christina Peck, she's trying to get in. She said she's been waiting. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see if we see her. Karen, can you get her in? It's not coming up on mine. Thank you for that. My goal all along is to make sure once we have all the information to make sure that you have access to the information to have ECRM. Um, but Christina, you're not on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so like, okay. And then I have to go out and do another round of that. Oh, she's there, she goes. Okay, so again, you, you're gonna look at fans as an implementation process, but again, you're looking to kind of big, build a bigger plan. So um, I can come back to this later in the year and we can talk about it privately as well. But again, you're gonna have to come up with a plan uh, of through those 11 questions that we have, right? 
through those 11 questions, you're going to start to kind of ferret out all of the information that you need. And you're going to kind of ferret it out to go, okay, I have a clear picture of who and why and what. Now I just need to kind of set it up. So, and that's kind of the next part that we're going to work on is really how do you set it up? You know, where, what does the plan look like for building and engaging with super fans? And so again, you're, you're just looking to have things drop. It's not, it's not hours of, of, of being in something, but it is really figuring out what that's going to look like. So your first goal for 2021 would be to decide if you want a super fan, to curate um, the content that you would give to those super fans, and then to really kind of start picking out who they were and, and some of the next slides. So not everybody needs a super fan. Um, but like this picture, what I like about super fans is social media allows you to send all of them a note at once, <laughs> right? Think about that. The people that are standing out there waiting in line, it allows you to know that all of them are there for you and what you create. And that's a really big deal. And, and so the reason I'm, I'm willing to kind of remind people to do the work is because it's actually incredibly time-saving because if you want to be busy for a season, so Jamie and I'll use you again as an example because you do parties, right? Whether this would have been Jamie or Ashley um, or um, Dawn, right? That these are things that are activities that people are doing, right? If you wanted to do one site set kind of activity, that you can kind of start making money on more, you can just send it out to your super fan base to go, hey, I'm gonna book 12 crisp holiday parties. The first 12 that get it, will get the photographer as well. And we'll come in and photograph the event. Here's what it is. They still have to pay for the event, but they get first of something, right? So when you kind of take the exhale, oh, I want you to think about pace setting. Um, and that is really the cadence at which you're doing something. For any of you who have come on to a summer theme, right? That I'm gonna do a summer theme every year. It's a cadence. I'm only gonna do it once a year. Um, that it's, it's during the summer, we all can look forward to it. Okay, that's the pace. But once that pace is set, you have to decide, right? What is the, what's the conversation? What's, what are you hoping to get? And um, that's not just for your customers. That's also for your fans. That's for your super fans. That's for your co-creators. It's something that everyone, right? If you're putting out content, you're gonna decide that pace and who's getting it. And I do want you to remind yourself that you are a curator. And what that means is that you're there to kind of put that art museum of, of, of what you want. Um, it's kind of like the greatest dollhouse playing world of the world, right? Or if you were into um, action figures, right? It's, it's when you make that whole action figure awesome. And it's really saying, look, here's, here's how we want the world to see us. Here's how we have scope. It's the impact. For many of you, you have an artistic expression that you're, that you're doing. So what does it always look like? Um, when, when you look at something that has a specific brand, it doesn't matter how you do it, you can tell, right? I'll use an example of a Snickers bar. Um, the Snicker bar changed all the words but because their brand identity was so specific on that brown wrapper and this type of font that it had, it didn't matter. They can write anything in there and you know it's a Snickers bar. They don't have to even use their name because you've identified with it because they've done all the other media, right? Coca-Cola, all anyone has to do is see red and white and the little swirl and we're done. Right. 
So when you start to look at the curation, it is the appearance of what is there. And a lot of times it's that context, right? Um, if you look at Apple, right? What is the color you attach with Apple? It's not red, it's white, it's white space. That, that is what they have tried to create is white space for your creative canvas. So that was a huge part of what, why their stores were white, not just to be clean and esoteric, uh, uh, clean and, uh, and, and easy to get to. They, they were white because they wanted to give the idea of a whiteboard. So when you are looking at this, I'm gonna bring the music industry in here um, because they are truly the, the massive innovators of super fandom. Um, they are the original uh, super fan builders. And when you think about your content, super fans expect to be dated. They expect you to, you know, want to try harder for them. They expect curation. They, 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 this isn't just like, hey, this is what I did today. This is someone you're having a deeper, more committed relationship with. Super fans um, will sell your arenas out. Uh, super fans will get you to the charts. Super fans will make sure your books are full. Um, for, for me, um, my personal pieces, that's why I'm booked a year in advance. That, that my, my time slots will sell out a year in advance because of the way that I'm curated um, that business piece. So when you think about your content to super fans, I don't want you to think about it as an album drop. I want you to think about it as an album drip. Okay, so used to be back in the you know, day that you would release an entire album. That's not how you deliver music anymore. You drip an album out and then you release the whole thing. So you'll release a single, six to eight weeks later, you'll release another one, then another one. You don't, you don't give the whole thing at one time. And that's the largest change in content that has happened in the last 10 years is how music has changed the, the expectation level of what we want in entertainment. So think about that kind of in your curation, when you're building your super fan um, <coughs> marketing plan, think about it in six to eight weeks. So nobody wants to hang with a concept for much more than just a few weeks. Then they want, then they want something new, right? So if you're gonna concentrate on kitchen cabinets and you're gonna have a cabinet-a-thon, right? Anybody um, may have remembered uh, Shark Week, right? It was just one week, but boy, it was great. It's Shark Week, right? And now everybody knew it was Shark Week. They knew it was coming. They did all the ad prep for it, right? And then all of the super fans of sharks could concentrate because all the content for that week was on sharks, right? So super fandom. For all of the people who didn't want to watch the Super Bowl, what did they create, right? Because the Super Bowl still wanted all those dollars, but all of those fans that don't want to watch the Super Bowl would much rather watch puppies, right? So there is the annual puppy bowl and it's still a Super Bowl content, but it's really made for all the people who don't actually care about the game. So they can watch puppies for two hours. Um, for those of you who are doing any type of social media, whether that be sharing content, audio, video, um, one of the tools that you can use for your super fans and how you're going to connect with them is guesting. This is you guesting on something and someone guesting in yours. Uh, if you are holding private groups or live chat, um, this has been easier than ever. Um, I'll use Ty Goodwin as an example. Um, Ty does, um, she's been in marketing for a lot of years. And so the way that she uses guesting is that she'll do a live chat, but she wants that chat to be, you know, lively. So she will have all of her regular moderators come in and start talking so that when anybody comes into that 
private group, it's, it's, it's going quickly. And then because those are guests that always come into the show, people are interested in what they do as well. So they may know you not because you are that thing. They may end up knowing you because one of your guests was of their interest as well. Um, but guesting is also another way to not worry about having a group because you can invite a guest to moderate as well because they're gonna have different uh, ways to do that. Um, for any of you who know Michelle Berg, who's also in this group off and on, that she does a lot of guesting in lots of different groups because she works on Shopify all the time. So she has a body of knowledge that people wanna talk about on Shopify because so many people have online shops and have technical questions and Shopify is not there to do that. So that's where you're kind of getting it. I think one of the things that on this next slide um, that I think this is gonna to apply to probably half of you because you have so many other people that are super interesting in your bevy of, of co-creators that they can become part of your super fandom. They can become part of what you're talking about. So um, Sandy, I would use you as an example, which is that you have this great um, person that can come in and make that house look great, right? So she, she has her own group of people. She has her own social media. She has her own business, but she will come into that house and make it look amazing. So when you start to look at that, she would be considered a tastemaker. Um, so someone who is already appreciating the work that you do, that they create something like or about that, and then they can also come into your fan nation here, uh, that they will also like that person's content or conversation so much that they're gonna come back to you and being your super fan because of these taste makers. It's different than guesting, a taste maker is someone who really has more to offer. They have more content to give or they have something that's very specific. Um, so I'll give you an example. Um, if we were talking about this as, um, okay, I'm gonna really go, I'm coffee connoisseurs is my, my group, right? Okay, it's coffee connoisseurs. Who would be a taste maker I would get to is I would find a roaster that's crazy and delicious, right? Or I would find a coffee shop that's my favorite in this area. Or, you know, that these are people that already have built things that are like what you have, but they appear regularly. So um, that may be a lighting company. That may be um, a variety of things. I would think about who your taste makers would be. Another place to explore is adjacent grouping. Um, so if you go back to the music content, right? What is very interesting is there's this crossover. There's this crossover. Oddly, uh, people who like jazz, uh, if they like jazz music and they like that kind of thing, interestingly enough, frequently like ska, which is a whole different thing. You wouldn't have noticed that unless you were someone who, who could understand what that connotation was, right? And ska is, um, is also just a very unique SKA is not what you think of when you think of jazz. And in jazz, there's all these different kinds of jazz. So look at your adjacent groupings. So if you're a photographer, what would that adjacent grouping be? Um, if, you're, if you're doing photography, um, let's say that you were a naturalist photographer, your adjacent grouping may be people who like the state parks. Your adjacent grouping may be somebody who just likes nature. <clears throat> your adjacent grouping <clears throat> can be someone who also likes just hiking. So if you're an outdoor photographer, you know, who's interested in outdoors? Uh, there's, there's, there's adjacent groupings. Now, some of you already do these um, <clears throat> firework events. If I was going to focus on one thing that you could do in 2021 
that is just testing out fan base. So if you were just gonna pick one thing, this is the page I would pick from, which is what would a firework event be? And a firework event, uh, if we were back in the old days of, of networking, it would have been like bring a friend day, right? That was their firework event that they would talk about it all year, right? That you can bring a friend. Uh, but it's, it's kind of that thing that's a little more exciting. It's special, people can kind of look forward to it. Um, it's, it's kind of what, when you think about what that single is gonna be, it's the, off of an album, it's the single that you think is gonna go to number one. So think about what that would be in your business. It may be that you're gonna showcase all the new stuff for this year, or you know, what are you building? It it's, it's, could be a special event. It can be a unique offer. Um, if any of you have heard of a company called Lush, L-U-S-H, they do Bath and Body. Their firework event, oddly enough, is the day after Christmas. So uh, there is not one store that I have seen people line up for consistently at seven in the morning to try to get a spot in because Lush will put in the next day, every single item they will sell their, their entire store out. They send it out to their super fans. We will let all of you in before we open the store. So at 7 a.m. the day after Christmas, the malls are opening special for those people and that line, they will let them in and they will let them shop before they even open the store to the rest of the public right? That's super fans. And that's their firework event um, that uh, Victoria's Secret used to have one uh, where they had their semi-annual clearance sale, right? And they would bring in lots and lots of, of product that they had never had in their stores because they wanted, that people were so excited about buying that they would buy things that were of a different quality or of a different uh, style because it's on sale. So if, if underwear are three for $10, you'll buy a lot of different kinds of underwear because they're only three for $10. So Victoria's Secret will make underwear at that price point so that they can sell more. That's a firework event. Um, just like if you uh, have been to stores that have like outlet malls, all of that product is built a lot of times for that, they'll put in a little bit of, of new merchandise so that it gives the feeling that it's all extra or discounted. But the reality is, is that a lot of that product is being built for that store. So a firework event may have a unique offer. <clears throat> Sometimes it's the best seat in the house. The uh, firework events, <coughs> if you've been to, um, if you've been to, what's the word I'm looking for? A concert, uh, not in 2020, but prior to that, they have a firework event before every single, um, every single band is having a firework event before they perform, right? You can buy, instead of buying an $80 ticket, you can buy an $800 ticket that will get you into the front row, that'll get you five seconds to meet the band, that'll get you some hors d'oeuvres, that'll get you free parking, so again, those are super fans. So you don't have to sell an $80 ticket. You can sell an $800 ticket. And, and that's pretty fantastic. So think about what your firework event would be. So again, uh, the picture that I came up with here is, um, you can just raise your hand. Anybody remember this theme, right? Anybody remember this theme, right? This one, right? These are, um, this was uh, from um, My Beast Within, right? So that was the firework event, right? We're gonna have it for the summer. We're just gonna play that. I made all these masks and people could take photographs in them. So when you're thinking about that, you're thinking about um, giving yourself some creative way to be different um, that you aren't normally in. You don't have to have it be a physical item. Um, some of you may have remembered this theme from last summer, right? That it was a closed group. We don't let people share content out of it. So if you put content in that group, it's only for that group. So you don't have to open it up to the world. 
because that's not how groups work anymore, right? That it's a private piece. So like when we send you the audio to the secret podcast, only you guys can get in there, right? So you can go and hear other content, but only it's only been created for you. So when you think about that online group, so this is a summer theme. Last year was Goblet Summer, right? Everybody could do it. Some people were in it every day. Some people weren't in it very often, but everybody that, that, that wanted to be in that group chose to be in that group. They were invited to that group. It had a time period. It had an invite list and it had an outcome. And, and, and the outcome in that particular event was right prosperity education right to teach people how to how to feel more prosperous in their everyday life how to celebrate every day so if you think about an online group or an event right it has a time period you're going to close that group it's not an open all the time group it's just special for that time and it goes away uh, clubhouse that's being created was created exactly for this so you're going to see clubhouse come on probably to the main scene by the end of 2021. And, um, you know, it's that content isn't eligible to be held. You, it will disappear once the, uh, once the room is closed. So again, for you, you know, what are, what are your super fans getting from you? Um, this was an event that we did a uh, superhero cake fight, right? So we had cake fight one, superhero cake fight one, and then we, it was so fun. We waited three years and we brought back superhero cake fight again because who doesn't want to have a cake fight, right? So it's a class that was only offered every so often. It's curated and somebody's going to walk away with also a story that they can tell. So think about for yourself, super fan, super fun things, okay? And this is where I'm going to kind of open us back up and then I'll come back to the slides after this, where we've got almost all of them through because you still have a few questions left. But I'm gonna open this up to kind of going, all right, what could your super fan stuff be? So I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna pull it um, back into us. Where are you on your super fan piece? Any of it ringing a bell? I'll start. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. I, where I'm at, like, I didn't really understand, I, not, I understood, but the breaking down of what this is, but I really, like, took a part of, like, I feel like I'm a bit of a curator, and that's kind well, of the, that's the aesthetic that I lead with when mm -hmm. I have my private dinners, or even I'm dealing with brides, but um, going into this year and writing into last year about, like, what this year looked like, I really wanted to whether it's by my pictures, whether someone attends what I have doing, or they've experienced something that they experience in a certain way and learning what my aesthetic looks like and mean. Yep. So like one of the things, like a part of my experiences, so I did a New Year's Eve dinner and, um, and it was just a closed dinner. A very, I selected the people that I invited to come to the dinner and purchase a ticket on the invite. <laughs> Right. And one of the things to start out the night is I said, well, we're going to close out 2020 and I want you to put your name because all year, everything that I do, I'm having people do these little cards. Oh, yeah. And they're their favorite cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And so like. And one of the things that and then they had some other things. And so one of the things that afterwards I was talking to somebody who didn't attend sitting with somebody who did attend and the whole time they talked about how I controlled the evening and how they left with an experience that they almost can't speak about and that's exactly what I planned out and exactly what I wanted to do and leverage so then when I put out for my private valentine's dinner the tickets were sold in an hour yeah. from the from the conversation to the thing I haven't even done a flyer <laughs> so or an advertising but just from the words and the um the aesthetic of what I did but I'm trying to be very intentional in everything that I do that what I'm putting out speaks to exactly who I am right right and yeah. and and there's your a right 
I mean, yeah. really saying, look, this is this is what I'm good at. This is the um, the the content or the relationship I want people to walk away with. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's that curation. April, I'll use you as an example because you're new and you have new stuff, right? When you think about <clears throat> the things that you would want to curate, it would probably be healthy, loving relationships. Right? So how my, would niche, that my niche is a woman who is in a long-term relationship who's lost her sex drive. Okay. So when you start to look at that, right? What, what can you create it for those folks, right? And that's where I'll let people kind of respond. But when you are looking at that grouping, um, what would you want for them? I want all women to know that for healing, it's like mind, body, and soul. And so it's getting back to like self-love. There's a lot of limiting beliefs that we have to dig into and just like the way, like everything that we've been taught about sex, especially as women, it's been taught as like a very scary thing. So kind of getting people to like understand that there's nothing wrong with them. There's something wrong with our culture and that everyone can heal and have amazing sex. Right, right. So again, that super fan piece, they may want more time with you. They may want to hear more about that. They may want to hear more specifics, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a unique piece because you have a set of laws that are around you. Um, yeah, I can't uh, really say much on Instagram. Right. So you have a specific like, set of laws that are around you. So being you in know, a podcast with her, or in being able to 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 be a subscriber to a, a a podcast or to a newsletter or tips and you know like you have regular tips and tricks that that could trickle. I down. have a I have a podcast. Oh yeah. Well, you should put that in the the chat piece. So okay. do that um, because that then they can listen to it. They can give you feedback, right? That's the fun of this group um, is that you can get more information. Um, Janine, you have <clears throat> you've done some events as well, and you do a lot of events with other photographers. Um, how how has that helped you? Um, I really have enjoyed putting together a community within my industry um, as anybody who works for themselves knows it can be kind of isolating. So um, I remedied that uh, pre-COVID to doing small business workshops at my studio. And I also really love um, um, learning about business and I brought in different people to present and then would host- That's guesting, you know, right? Guesting right there. Yes, guesting, yep. Um, these were all in person. I didn't transition anything into virtual, um, but there's definitely a lot of opportunities around that as well. Um, I just stepped back from doing that over the last year. I was in a lot of different directions and uh, over uh, the year before actually um, in how um, I was doing things. So I, I took an opportunity just to step back from that, but I'm re-exploring it and um, it also cultivated a lot of work for myself in my business because uh, in, the, in the way, like if other people were booked for wedding dates, um, they saw me as somebody that was capable and front of mind because I host these workshops with people. Right. So you can have other co-creators, right? So yeah. you have partnerships that can send you business. You, you, you build a lot by having that kind of fan base, right? Right. Yeah. And do you think that by hosting those groups that people looked at your work more? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just out of credibility for um, hosting the events. Right, right. And, and also, this is a personal question, so I don't not, you don't have to answer it uh, if you don't want to, but did it give you the opportunity to feel more creative? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think just the fact that I could compartmentalize my weeks a little bit with um, connecting with people, learning things, and then um, implementing yeah. um, made me step back of the like the circle that you can get into by continuously doing the day-to-day -day stuff in your business. Right, right. Trish, I'm going to go to you because you have done a lot of work about building a, a, a conversation this year. Yeah. Um, how, how has that paid off for you? 
Um, well, I, I, as you've been talking about super fans, I mean, I was starting to just click them off in my, in my mind, you know, uh, which I didn't, I didn't even think about, but I, I certainly do have a, a pretty core set. And then, um, I'm finding that they are sharing my content. They're sharing my posts. They're sharing my videos. Uh, and the messaging of course has been mental health and uh, inconsistent though I have been with it sometimes because I've been not well, it, because it's authentic, I'm very authentic, I'm very real. I don't, I don't get on and do whiny, pissy, complainy. I get on and talk about um, results, action, hope and inspiration. So I try to keep it always up, even though I will sometimes say, hey, I've just kind of came out of a recently darker place here's what I learned from it. Here's where I'm going with it. So I just try to keep it very, very real. And I think that helps. A lot of my super fans are people that knew me way, way back in high school that I wasn't even friends with, but because I was an entertainer and a big, you know, well-known in the, in, in the school, they knew me and have followed me ever since. And they're still with me now. And those are, those people have become some of my super, super fans who message me privately all the time um, and tell me how much my sharing has meant to them and then of course the music piece adds in because you know most people are music fans so it's just it's turning into a really good combination and it's opening my eyes to a lot of possibilities of where i where i can take it especially once the pandemic ends right so you know building the online piece is is meant toward for me going to be toward hopefully uh the public speaking and entertaining circuit once we're back to that one day right. so do you think in a very niche spot the, the same question I had for Janine, has it made you more creative? Focus oh, on absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and more spontaneous, I think. More spontaneous and not being afraid to, to go with that, you know, coming up with some ideas and throwing it out there. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. So not being afraid to take some risks, not being afraid to to uh, make mistakes and fail and look like a goober. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's all right. <laughs> Right. Hey, I'm going to give Liz and Christina a chance to wave and say hi. Um, Liz, hi. quick, give us a like, hi, how are you? What are you doing? We have a chat box. So please put your information in there, both Christina and Liz. Okay. And I would love to hear, I'm Liz, but Trish, did, was it Trish that just spoke? Was yep. it um, hi. hi, I'm interested in your content and I'm wondering how I would follow you. I've never met you. And do you have a- oh, yeah. A blog? I, Could you put something in the chat? Like I will. I'll, I'll just direct you to my Facebook uh, page for now, which is kind of where I'm working from. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually working on developing a podcast too. But yeah, let me let me go ahead and put that in the chat for you. Thanks. Yeah. There's Good. so many things to develop. Podcasts. I mean, wow. I haven't yeah. even gotten into Facebook Live yet. So maybe it's it's the whole <laughs> tech world. Right. Yeah. It is. Liz, tell, um, tell the group what you do for a living. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm integrating my life coaching skills with a, um, a healthy life uh, cellular, cellular health breakthrough product. That's the only one on the planet. It's good for, it, it has these um, molecules that are native to the body and helps your body heal itself. It's also, I'm starting out with the pitch for your face. I'm 64. And um, since I've been using this, I feel, I don't know, I feel <laughs> that I look about 10 years younger. And it really helps a lot with, um, it helps your cells to turn over in 28 days instead of 90, which they would be at my age. So anyway, it's a way into the, the liquid product. And then I'm gonna get into more stuff that Trish is talking about real life stuff and I'm looking for a niche and I think it's women 45 and over that are more looking for their purpose in life. So I'm gonna integrate, it's not just about the health product, it's looking about what makes you really wanna get out of bed in the morning and connect with the world. Wonderful, okay. well, make sure you put some information in the side chat. I will, Because okay. you get the side chat with the uh, video, when Karen sends you the, the video of today, you'll get that as well. Oh, great. Okay, thanks. Uh, Christina, give us your quick intro. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I forgot my AirPods, so I'm sorry if there's a little background noise. Um, 
My name's Christina. I'm 26, a busy mom, wife. Um, I've spent the last five years of my life working as a nurse. Um, but when the pandemic started, I wanted something to call my own. I wanted to stay home with my son. And so I went out on a limb and found I had a passion for marketing and graphic design. So everything that I'm doing is self-taught. I watch YouTube videos. I read some marketing books. It's a lot of trial and error and illustrator and stuff like that. But I, I tell my clients that I'm like the marketing fairy godmother. So I take your little pumpkin and I turn it into that beautiful horse-drawn carriage that's going to that's going to the ball at that beautiful castle. So I'm still in my beginning stages, but things are going well, and I'm super excited to keep growing. Good, good. Well, welcome to class. We're glad you're here. Um, make sure you put all your information in the in the side chat because they're going to want that. Okay, I'm going to go back so we can get the last few questions um, to share my screen again with you. Uh, and uh, going back to some of the things you guys are already doing, uh, which is again, right? What are the events that you can have? Um, how how can you reach your people differently? <clears throat> and um, this idea of highlighting someone else's story, I think that's another place where a lot of you can really do well. Um, Liz, based on what you just talked about, that would be for you, right? How do you highlight the stories of the people that you've helped? Um, Kathy, this would be, I would love this as a walkthrough of somebody who's like loving their kitchen. Um, that, you know, how, how, can we, how can we make those super fans show off what they did? Um, how can we get them to engage in what makes them happy? Janine, you just changed your whole pro business profile. So really ch getting somebody to talk about why it's so important to think about the art that they have in their house and, and the loving uh, images that they want in there, right? So that's another place where you can really look at your super fans. Um, and, and super fun, super fan things don't have to, some things can be just snap. snap but everybody's locked away. Everybody's in their house. So think about some of these other things that you can do right now. These are contests or participation, quick response games. For any of you who were um, the, earlier in the pandemic, I went and ordered um, just some random uh, stickers and that I put them on my Facebook page and I'm like, hey, Trivia question, first person to answer, I'll mail you this sticker, right? Not, you know what, it's just ridiculous. It's so, out, it's so quirky, it's so out of there and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know, what is, what, what is the circumference of the sun, you know? <laughs> it was just a way to play. It, 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 and that is what I do with the people around me, right? For me, I want to play with you. I want to enjoy and laugh with you. And so when you're looking at your super fans and, and what you're looking to do, you know, for Trish, you may be singing with them. You may be doing a duet, you know, that TikTok may be really your jam. Um, Jamie, one, one of the things that you're doing with people is celebrating with them and, and giving them a reason to celebrate in a way that they didn't have access to. So sometimes it's um, a guessing game would be okay. Um, in order to win, if you guys haven't seen the guy on YouTube that he has an online platform, he sells all sorts of, you know, garbage on Amazon. Um, and, I, and I do mean that lovingly garbage, but they're all items that are under a hundred dollars. He's got a whole Amazon store. So they're doing all the shipment. It's all drop shipped, but he will have a contest four times a year where he'll give away $30,000 and a truck. And he'll drive it to your house if you win. So he'll put up this huge shopping event through. And, and, and it started because all of his shipments came in at once and he needed the money. He had to have 30 days to pay out. So Who is this? Um, it's, I, don't, I can't remember his name, but it's again, he gives away $30,000 cash and a brand new truck as the thing. And he does all these ads about, you know, hey, I'm gonna, um, I'm really gonna give this away. You gotta shop in the next however many times and then Amazon sells all this crap. So <clears throat> he's, if you're, if you're watching a lot of YouTube, he'll pop up, <clears throat> but right, that he's really just getting people to shop, 
right? And then he'll show videos of like, no, really, this is, the, I, I really won this truck. <clears throat> so sometimes you'll do a BOGO. That's kind of a simple thing to go. If you can buy one hour, get one hour. Sometimes you'll have um, things for your super fans of you have reduced rates. <clears throat> you can, um, you know, offer them something that's very specific. So I'll use um, Christina as an example, since you're new, right? One of the things that you can do is, right, buy one, get one. That, right, buy an hour, get an hour. Or buy an Instagram feed. I'll also format your um, Facebook feed, right? Because they're different dimensions. <clears throat> you may do a buy one, get one. Hey, I'll, I'll format it for you in two different things. If you would have done it normally, now it's a BOGO, right? You can give people the opportunity to give input on something. Um, love them or hate them, the Kardashians have mastered super fan. And one of the things that they will do is they will drop um, a product idea out there and they'll decide before they even make the product if there's enough interest in that product to even build it. So they don't have, they can do their R&D in, in 10 minutes. They don't have to have a subgroup or anything like that. And I think a lot of your people um, are going to really enjoy giving input. Uh, one of the things that is very interesting um, that I actually learned from my son's business, when this is your question number seven, uh, for those of you who wrote down the one through 11, this is question seven, um, is when do they play with you, right? That your group has a time zone. Um, what is interesting is that my son has a business where he sells insects. Um, <clears throat> like bugs. And what we noticed was when we dropped content, none of those people are answering it or viewing it during the day. When we had to drop content, we had to drop it after 9 p.m. And if we were going to drop content, that group is chattering like mad from mm -hmm. 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Because that's, that's when that's going to fly. So knowing when when are your fans online? Not everybody's up at a live chat at 7 a.m. The people that are walking with me at five in the morning is a very small group, very small group for a walking club, but they're willing to get up in the dark at 5 a.m. Uh, they're all crazy right now because we can't get into the mall, but uh, you know, that think about when you are doing that. Question number eight and nine, right? Can they share the experience? And, and I would think about what they're allowed to talk about and what they're not allowed to talk about. Um, sometimes that's setting up ground rules. Sometimes that's keeping a closed group. So like when I do a summer theme, it's always a closed group. They aren't eligible to share the content outside of that group um, because I don't want them to, um, because it's only meant for people that have signed on to be part of that club. So uh, if you're in that summer fan group, only the people in there will get to be able to interact with you. Um, and they only can come in if they, unless they have an invitation. But because people have an interesting conversation, you're gonna think about how, why and how they are gonna share it verbally with the people around them, right? How do they share that experience? So they get to create in that group and they get to be with that group, but how are they gonna share it outside, right? How are they gonna talk about it? And that's also where your curation is, right? How are they talking about this little weird group that they had for the summer or this, this crazy little Tesla group, right? The Tesla group also, you have to be approved to be in there, right? So that, that also makes it so that we only talk about Tesla, okay? Not everybody's you know, chiming in there. You don't have people that are putting in content that is meaningless. You can really, it's better to have 10 super fans that you can co-create with than it is to have 10,000 followers. You'll get more out of the 10. You'll, you'll give more in the 10. And we're here to 10, right? Um, again, right, what are the benefits your fans get, right? What are the benefits that they can say that they are receiving from being that super fan? Um, that may be that, they are more inspired, they like their kitchen, they, they are feeling like they have more pictures of their family. What do they get? 
You know, what is it that they, they love? They love watching the houses you sell. They love learning about the neighborhoods. They love knowing that other people in their neighborhood bought a house from you. Um, they love the floral displays that you're doing. What do they get? And then again, what do you get from having super fans? And that's a really big question, right? What do you want? And, and what are you going to receive? So that's your question 11. What, what's gonna be important for you? When we look at that for many of you, and Trish, you can attest to this already, um, many of you are going to build super fans who are gonna be your real life connections. They're not somebody virtually out there in the, in the way, way far away. They are really going to be somebody that you are there somebody that you get to, to co-create with and, and really can help guide you forward. Um, so that's why I'm gonna stop sharing um, and kind of pull us back to group. Um, I can already tell there's lots of questions. How many of you thought about a fan before you got onto this class? Yeah, a couple of you, good, good, okay. Let's go round and round um, and we'll go, what are you taking away from today? What are you learning? What are you committing to? What, what, or even if you have a question. So Kathy, I'm gonna start with you because you're in my top left corner. Question, um, I, I never thought of myself as having fans. It's more that I have um, kind of one-time people that uh, walk through my door and I make Kathy and then and then hopefully they tell their friends, but I never thought of how to, how to utilize them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so what's the question out of that? It feels really uncomfortable. In fact, thinking about it makes me feel sweaty. Um, <laughs> right. Like, hey, wanna be my super fan? And I, I don't know how to even start that conversation or to start delivering some type of content that would help them that would help me help them utilize my services. Well, I'm going to open that to the group. Anybody have any advice? So awkward. Yes. Um, what, giving them like, because you help people, I'm sorry, like design or make their house look great, right? Yes, but for like remodeling, not for necessarily like, like interior designer. I mean, giving them like free tips, like acting as if you're the expert because you are and giving them- I can pretend to be time because it's like for example I watch you know there's a lot of people that I get free tips all the time from but at the end of the day like I'm not going to do it I'm going to hire them to help me do it but if you can get I, I know from experience just people that I've bought and stuff from the more free advice I get the more that and I'm like oh now I know how to do this they become that trusted person then when it comes to actually doing it myself so would tips like on, on how to maintain something or so, cause you know, so often um, the tips that I can give are pre project, like why you don't want to buy your faucet from Home Depot or um, what's the difference between mm -hmm. laminate flooring and LVT. Um, so those are Have you ever thought about doing like before and afters, like, and, and then highlight that and maybe go into a little detail of why you took a bay window and did this to it and show the window before and then show the window after or a setting that what like would be right in front of that like where you placed things in the home because of this or for whatever and then just ask people which did you like better or what do you think about this transition and then just letting them kind of see one, your craft, two, your creativity, and then giving them something like maybe once a month, this is my project for this month. This is, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And then showing them the reveal could be your firework kind of thing. This is like, this is it, you know? Have you ever thought about doing anything like that? No, I hadn't. Jeannie, you got that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things that I'm a huge fan of of Kathy, because I've gotten to work with her in a lot of different situations, is right her knowledge of faucets. I know that faucets may sound super mundane to many of you, but a right, right, 
a, a <laughs> shitty faucet will piss you off every day, right? Every time you touch it, it will piss you off um, when it doesn't work. But having a great faucet in a kitchen makes you feel rich. You know, that you're like, I love this faucet. I'm just going to have some water, you know? I mean, it's something so <laughs> spectacularly normal that makes you feel great, right? So paying attention to a faucet, I think is, again, one of, one of the things that you can go through of like, why do I like this faucet? Why do I hate it for this? It, you know, that everybody liked a certain kind of sink, right? That those deep, deep farmhouse sinks were like everybody's greatness. That they were sure they were gonna like wash babies in them or something, I don't know. But, right, that they had some pros and cons. Janet, what do you got? Um, Kathy, I'm a fan, and the thing that I want to know from you is um, the secret stuff you know, your knowledge on to help someone purchase. So we can all go to Home Depot and make stupid decisions, but you are a liaison between our, us having a happy life by making the right decision. And I agree with the faucets. We saved up for years for one once. <laughs> um, and so that's what I would want to know. And also, designers have access to a lot more. So for example, for Hunter Douglas blinds, which I wish I had, there's three that we can buy at Hirschfields or Home Depot. There's more that pros can get. So pros, so you have your knowledge and more products. So I, I want to learn from you, Kathy. <laughs> so that's right. what I want. Do you wear your glasses, by the way? That's Do you right? have glasses on today? Who? Janet, don't you wear glasses normally? Oh. Um, from distance, but y'all are close. They're right here. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm used to seeing you in glasses, so I thought maybe something happened. We're closer. <laughs> right, you're closer. Um, you know, and I think that's also a conversation that you can have with people about the, they're just their relationship, your relationship with Wayfair, that you have a different buying opportunity, um, that you'll always get the lowest price because of who you are and how much product you purchase. So mm -hmm. even if they see it on Wayfair, um, it, your, your, your buying opportunity is different than theirs. So that, that almost pays for your hour on just a few items. It does. And it we like you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you guys. This is really, very helpful. Right. Now okay. I'm going to have to scribble down all those notes. April, what are you taking away with you today? Or do you have a question? Either one. Yes, this is like a really good reminder to me to just really like narrow it down and talk like about specific things because I know that I've had where I'm kind of like trying to get everyone in and just like narrow it down to like that super fan. I, I know that's what I need to do. I like what you said too, just about like playing for them and like just it, it gets my brain spinning. Like what can I offer like my specific niche, I guess. I have, a, I'm having a hard time right now just like knowing how to get the word out because I get censored on Instagram and Facebook a lot. Yeah. And then um, it's also kind of a tap pocket pop, a top, like most women don't want to go to their friends and be like, my sex life sucks. Like, and this is who I'm working with. You should too. I mean, there are people who will, so I'm just kind of like brainstorm how it is. And that's where a person for you. And that's a private group. Um, <clears throat> what's it, a private group? I, that, that's what, where a private group will really help you is you close the content down. It's not available to everybody. It is invite only and you can keep them nice and tidy. Um, <clears throat> I moderate for, um, for a group that has a, that is very large, um, but it is, uh, mothers of addicts. So that, right. So when when we look at all of the things that are in there, I only, I don't need to show up on my feed. There's two different versions. There's an open one, but then there's a private one. And that private one is just for mothers of addicts. And they can ask other parents questions. These are really personal items. It's, we've done an enormous amount of work on the back end to go, hey, look in this section. Here's a workbook. Here's all of the places you can send them to treatment. Here's all of this other stuff. So it, it, you can create that community truly. And she was just an average person. She was just a mom who had an addict. Um, and, and I think there's 23,000 people in there. Oh. And you know, when, when you see somebody who's like literally like, 
I got a baggie full of this. What is this? What is this? You know, a hundred people are going to put an answer in there for you. So it's also a place where people can kind of unite. Um, and Trish, that would also work for you as a real private group, a real private group. Sandy, what are you taking away? Thanks, April. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to think of, of, you know, who my super fans are, you know, how to identify them and how to reach out to them. So I do know who some of them are. And one thing that they like is they like, I like to involve them in other things that aren't real estate. And it makes them more like my friend. They're not just my client. And so like I have families, you know, like I'm their family realtor and they do like they would like to participate in any activities that I do. Mm -hmm. So some of the things I do, but I don't just do it for my super fans. I do it like for my client base. Um, you know, I'll have giveaways. Like for Thanksgiving, I had a pie giveaway. Ooh. And, you know, sometimes like last year for Mother's Day, I bought a bunch of mother, you know, a little Mary Kay lip gloss and stuff. And I ran around and I gave it to some of the, you know, like 20 of the moms that are past clients or future clients, or they're just like the relative of the client. But anyway, personal things like that. Um, and uh, even the Project Elf, you know, some of those people that came there, are like my super fans, like it's, and then I also found out like who's reading my newsletter because because I advertise that in my newsletter. Yeah, it's reading your newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So like I, so what I thought I could do is go and look at my newsletter and see who's actually opening yes. the newsletter and find out really, I mean, that would really help me to identify some people. And then some things I've done in the past are just client events and like a lot of educational seminars. I haven't done any recently, but a lot of education on different topics. I had a smart home team with eight different home related uh, people in it, like inspector and the window treatment person and the mor mortgage banker. And we'd all take turns talking about stuff. And I'd have about 12 people that would show up to every single event. They just like to do stuff like that. And then I'd have a, maybe another 12 that only came on topics that interested them. And then another thing I did, I have had two electric car events. That was a fun- Oh, that's right. That was great. I loved the test drive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so for the, All the Tesla people came. And so like exactly what you said, they are crazy for all this detail of electric cars. But yeah, we gave them an opportunity to uh, ride in Teslas and other electric vehicles and it was just a fun kind of thing. So, fun thing. Um, but yeah. And, and when I look at some of the things that I would have focused on for you in real estate um, that you have put a lot of work in is you put a lot of work into um, kind of Sandy special list, you know, yeah. that you have, a, you have curated an enormous amount of people that can help do projects and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I look at that list and you utilize it. So I think it, mm -hmm. it is something that could also make you money in the, in the long term. But okay. it really is a place where you can kind of build super fans as well. Okay. Is right. I've got the list. You know, it's not uh, here's the list. It's call Sandy. She's got the list. Right. Right. Call Sandy's assistant, actually, is what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Karen Carson, what, what are you taking with you today? Oh, there. Okay. Well, I'm taking away a lot. I never thought about fans. I have people that I interact with in several different groups. I have people who are artists, people who are writers, other coaches, but I never really thought about them as fans. But I suppose they are. They're always around, and I hadn't thought oh, about yeah. doing special events. So I'm going to think about that. And I think that everybody has gotten a lot more creative because you can't do what you used to do. So I think thinking there's no choice but to think outside the box because the box is closed. Right. So I think um, I think that's good. I have a lot of I do a lot of work on creativity because everyone has a lot of creativity, even though they don't give themselves credit for it. And so I think that's. That's good. I like you as a raging fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Brian Kelly, what are you walking away with today? You've got a couple different platforms that, to build on. 
<laughs> so, so definitely I'm taking away, I mean, I, I'm, I'm feeling resonated with what everybody else is saying. I'm taking away, but more specifically, I'm taking away the mental idea that I need to purposefully create consistent content. I create content. Um, I always create content, but I need to create some consistent content. So more of a rhythm in some of the content that I'm doing so that when I do attract super fans, I can provide them an opportunity to engage. The other thing I'm going to do, I got to start getting better at that hustle hook. You know, I got to, I got to start drawing in the resources through different opportunities. Um, I've tried some stuff I did, you know, but, but I, and, and I need to develop more of a price point um, for the super fans. Boom. What do we do? What kind of package do we put out and how do we get them on board? So all those things I'm taking away. Right. And Brian, just so that uh, the people who didn't know what you do, right, we're talking about the Lego uh, designer and builders. And the, the also, young builders and designers. Yeah. Yep. And then are you also talking about the toy business that you have too or no? Well, um, yeah, I should, I should find ways to incorporate more of a super fandom with my toy business. And I'm, I'm doing cross. I just did a custom Lego set and, um, and, and I did a, a preset that was limited edition. And then I did um, a finished set and then I'm going to start batching it with a workshop for young builders and designers. So right. I'm trying to, to cross promote both businesses. Right. And are you doing the assembly on those kits yourself? Yep. Yeah. So that's where I would really put those young builders and designers together is yeah. I would have them build it. Yeah, that's a good idea. That, you know, I, 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 that's, that's a great way to have young super fans is that they can be part of that kit and then they can cross check the kit, right? Yeah. That, designers have to know how to cross check. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So I like that for you as well. Um, all right, uh, Tina, let's go on to you. What are you taking away? Well, I think a lot of it is building on some of the stuff that I've kind of already started to maybe explore a little bit. I am basically not good in front of the camera. I never smile enough and I always look like I'm talking really weird. And so my goal this year has been to be able to just put myself out there a little bit more on social media. It's a little scary for me to do. Um, but I want to really, really try to reach um, the, the new home buyer um, and give them content um, at least on a, a weekly basis. And so trying to build a fan base there for people who might be thinking about, mm, I've never really bought a home. I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. The same with first time sellers. You know, you, you hear a lot of new home buyers, but people who are just their first time they've bought a home, but they have no idea how to sell it. You know, that's I a whole other niche. Yeah. And then, and the new agents, because I'm with, I'm with a, a team that it, it is beneficial financially to recruit people um, as new agents. And so trying to find some decent content, mainly my face for now, <laughs> to be able to uh, bring people on who are possibly thinking about being a new agent or are in the process already. And then just to be able to have um, organization within, because I'm a lover of numbers and an Excel spreadsheet nerd and trying to learn Google, but combining the two just to find some kind of organization within the real estate business itself, like that would appeal just to real estate agents and maybe brand new ones who haven't found a way to be organized in their business because that's a huge part of being successful in real estate. So kind of playing with those kinds of things and expanding on trying to find that fan base. Because I mean, a lot of people like my stuff, but you know, are they going to stay around when I'm not posting stuff about real estate? And that's kind of, to your point, that's kind of the people that you want to build. That's the well, relationship that, that I want. To, to everybody, because that idea of first time home seller, I think is really powerful. Um, any, anybody have any suggestions for Tina? Do on that? Seller or buyer? I thought she said. Seller. Seller. First -time first -time seller. That's interesting. That's a niche. I would think. Yeah. 
right? It's usually yeah. your first time home buyer. But mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's a whole different set of emotions. As somebody that sold my first house, not so recently, but the last house I sold, <laughs> um, it is something that I wouldn't have done unless there was some reason to do it. Like, I feel as though there's pain points that happen that make you grow out of your home. Yes. So understanding what those pain points are and what level they get to, to actually make the decision to do that is where people who would sell their home for the first time would be. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. a good point. That's, right. One of the things that, that I thought was helpful when we sold our house, which was years ago, but the realtor came in and looked at it and we had already done some things that we thought needed being done. And then she came in and looked at it. She says, you don't have to do another thing. Did we can I sell this tomorrow. Yeah. That makes sense. But we were, that was that was eight thousand dollars later that we had called her. <laughs> um. You know, I was just talking to somebody um, that said that they have, and I would be interested to know if, if any of the other we have two realtors in the group if they've done this that they have a a group and it was like somebody who does um, video marketing, but they have a, a realtor group that comes in and tells people, okay, for if you do these $10,000 worth of remodeling things, I can get you probably three times that mm -hmm. price. Um, yeah. So investing something somewhat small, I mean, and I know that, you know, eight or 10,000, $15,000 isn't small, but if it meant that you could double or triple your, your return on that, I don't know very many people that had the means that would say, nah, that's okay. I don't really need an extra 15 or $20,000 or 30 or 40 or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I, I, I think that's important because I think sometimes, and not all realtors are like this, and I'm sure, I know I'm not, and I'm sure, um, I'm sorry, what was the other lady's name? Cindy, Kathy? Sandy. Sandy, sorry, Sandy. I was so close. <laughs> um, I'm sure that that's not the way you operate either. When we go in to list a home, you know, we do that. We have a whole list of vendors that can come in and do uh, staging consults or, you know, if they're going to live there or, you know, what do you really need to do? Because a lot of times sellers are going to put money into things that is not going to gain them more. You know, they're going to come in and they're going to put all new carpet in, which may or may not be the best thing to do if they have like 25 year old appliances, maybe that money is better spent in putting in new appliances mm -hmm. and finishing appliances up some other paint. things. Stuff that's yeah. really obvious. But yeah. Do you, and work, a lot of, do you work with a remodeler like you and Kathy could hook up? Right. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, I mean, we do, you know, but oh, yes, okay. I'm open. I'm open to yeah. more. I'm open to different yeah. things because sometimes people are not sure. Like, honestly, there's a lady that I'm going to go do a listing appointment with next week. They're trying to decide, do they want to remodel or do they want to buy a new house? And, you know, what's the benefit going to be for them to do? So, yeah, having someone who can come and take a look at and see, you know, what they could do to make their home that they currently live in better as opposed to selling, that would be a good niche to have. Yeah, I would be happy to help with that, Tina. Um, okay. Or even when you yeah. have people that are looking to sell and they're like, so we're supposed to paint a light pink color. And I can help your, your clients pick out colors that um, that sell well or that, that work really well with what they have to make the space look cozy or bright or, or welcoming or all those things that, um, yeah. that you want buyers to walk in and go, oh. Right, exactly. You could also yeah. do, because I was thinking, excuse me, I'm just going to throw yep. real quick 30 so seconds. One more in and then I'm going to move us on. Okay, Tina. Um, yes. With Kathy, if Kathy did a free, I was thinking for Kathy, a thing like send me a picture of this corner of your house or this part of your house. I'll give you one major tip, you know, on how to remodel this or how to brush it up, depending on, you know. And then Tina, when you're sending to Kathy, Kathy sent, have them send a corner. Kathy gives a feedback and they get a feel for Kathy. They get a direct. Mm -hmm for what Kathy could do for their house instead of I know mm -hmm. a remodeler but here's yeah. what she can do for you here's one idea how does that feel I don't know I just to actually have Throw a it out there sure okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. <laughs> social media yeah. okay Christina I'm going to go to you what are you taking away from today 
or if you have a question. Christina, we're on you. Oh, she's thinking about it. She's trying to get in. <laughs> no, she, are you, you figure, are you seeing it? There you go. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> so I have, my mind's like racing a million miles a minute because I have so many ideas going after listening to this. Um, I never really thought of super fans. Um, and I get so focused on helping my clients build up their brands and, you know, creating content for them that I kind of forget to take my own advice and put that work into my own business. So I guess I just, I have to help myself figure out who my super fans are and um, how I can cater to them a little more, whether it be I create a private group, which I think somebody else was talking about um, and put like my own tips in the private groups and like exclusive deals in the private group. Um, so I'm really excited to take everything that I got out of this and try and put some things in motion. Yeah, um, I'm gonna open that up to the group again um, because they all love marketing, 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 um, all the things that you have. <laughs> um, anybody have any super, I mean, she's just starting out. You know, we have both April and, and Christina and Danielle who are all just, you know, starting out in their businesses. Um, any feedback for Christina? Graphic design. Maybe, maybe posting something out that would highlight what you can do, but highlight what you can do for somebody else. Like, I'm not sure how to put that into words. Like you could say, look at this video and I'm just generally speaking, look at this video or look at this content. Um, this is something that I could do for you if you're interested. And then you have like your best marketing idea behind this video or, you know, the graphics that you like to use or whatever that is. And then blasting that out onto the Facebook or your social media, which highlights you as a business owner that does this, but then it highlights, oh, look what I just did for my business. It's kind of a cool advertisement. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it makes sense. Janet, I feel like you're gonna have some content here for us <coughs> on how, how do you showcase graphic work since you are a graphic oh, person. I was actually listening for the ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I, can um, I to Christina because like, I'm, I invited Christina here and okay. Christina is young. And I think that like in watching some of her stuff, I don't think that she capitalizes on the youth that she is. So like, like when I say that, meaning like really learning the pieces that the youth use to market and advertise and stuff, I think we'll pull in uh, some more of your people. So like, I don't know, I can't remember who was just talking. So you know, like the different things that they do with graphics and the different things that they do, um, which then puts in light with you, you know, video content can be used. I mean, you have a whole family and that cute little boy of yours and Alfred, but taking that, which then I know for me, the person that I use for marketing is because I identify with her as a person and she identifies with me. I like her spirit. And I've, I watch her silly videos as well as her business videos. So I feel real personal with her. I'm a fan of her, then That's makes right. me a fan of her work. So like with you, I'm, I need to be, I'm a fan of you because I just like you, but, <laughs> but a fan, a fan of you as, a, as a, like, I think you could really capitalize on all of that you're from new york you're italian like no one knows that in what you do now and they should know that like just those things can i think can really propel you to to something else because she's actually pulling in the clients um and she could probably pull in a lot more if we could identify with you christina and not necessarily well yes kp marketing but that's your name but christina herself right right and, and, I, and I like that as information for everybody, right? That you are, you think about who you're fans of. You're fans because they're just awesome, right? And so, so looking at why you're awesome. And Christina, there may be something that you're really passionate about doing. So when I think about those super fans as well, for all of you, I would really focus on 
only doing fandom stuff that you like doing, <laughs> that you want more of, that pays you well, right? That if you are a photographer, you're probably gonna talk about photography. Um, but if you're a photographer and you really like food, uh, you may wanna talk about food too. I know I'm a photographer, but I also like this other thing, right? What, whatever that is, you're, you're looking to build credibility and play and, and a way to, to have somebody that's your trusted group. And they're also counting you in as that trusted group, right? Especially April for you, right? These are people that are gonna have to trust you. They have to trust that you're gonna moderate. They're gonna have to trust that you're gonna take down a content that is inappropriate. They're gonna have to trust you. And with that, they have to know you. I think that's, I, I think Jamie, and that's really right on, right on advice, right on. Um, Danielle, you have something to report to us. So let's, you welcome back. Hi. Hi, what do you, I don't know how much of today you even got. Uh, what do you take uh, away? I got a, quite a bit of it, actually. I was just not here. <laughs> um, I didn't think about it, but I guess my biggest super fans are eight. Yes. <laughs> and younger. Um, Tilly, my little sister, got married in September, and her nieces on her husband's side have asked me several times, what else am I going to do? What new flowers are coming out? And I have no answers yet. <laughs> um, for Christmas, I put scorpion corpses into resin. Um, and it, they turned out beautifully. Um, that was interesting. I, I will say I did not touch the scorpion at all, um, which made Karsten laugh just <laughs> hysterically because I refuse to touch anything that has more than four legs. Um, wow, what a rule. What a rule. <laughs> yeah, no, that's gross. I'm not going to do it. I, I, there, there may be some other people in this group that have the same rule of I won't touch something with more than four legs. Could be four, could be four legs, legs good, or less. more than that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four legs or less. Um, I'll touch a snake. That's not a problem. Um, so, but I, you got your website. I, I saw on the chat that you had your website up. I do. I have to find the link. It's a little dirt don't hurt at Wise, I think. Okay. Um, Tegan set it up for me because she's amazing. Good. Um, we we did a trade. I did scorpions and resin for her, and she built my website. I I love I love the trade. Um, and I and those of you who are new, Carson is my son, and he he owns the ISO Psycho, so he deals in just insects. Um, and so everything that you never want to live with is living, um, in in a property I own that he lives in. Yeah, and they're they're food for other yes, more legged food. things. <laughs> yes, so if you are somebody that has, you know, um, uh, lizards, or if you have terrariums or things like that, that's that's what he builds all of that stuff. So he builds bioactive and other things. So so he also has a really niche world. Um, but apparently, uh, they needed some scorpions in resin, which means that they're see through plastic. Uh, yeah. So um, what a, what a, will, what a great combo. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, also I videoed and sh like sent a video to Karsten cause he did not believe me that I was not going to touch the, the scorpion at all. And you can see the little video. I'm like holding it on like a popsicle stick, putting it in the mold. Good. good. Not once. So didn't touch it once. What have you taken away, Danny? What, what's um, the you're going to take today? That. My are... my super fans are probably going to be kids and their parents. Um, that I am probably going to do classes and videos for people who want to make their own bouquet for the special person. Um, like how fun would it be to get a bouquet that your boyfriend actually made himself um, in a class? Like he took the time. Right. Um, I love it. Went to class, built it himself, and right. brought it to you. Um, and then, you know, teaching kids how to 
plant and play with flowers and um, using my fandoms in, in my flowers. So having Harry Potter themed bouquets. So you can buy a bouquet for your Slytherin or your Gryffindor or yeah. Um, I love it. Doctor Who fans. Um, and, and sort of using my fandoms in my work to create fans for me. Yes. And, and, and that is really where I think everybody can kind of pull away from what you just said, Danny, which is, um, which is right, that she has fandom in all these other places, but now um, she can have, you know, those fans can now have a place to play as well. Um, so if you're a Harry Potter fan, you can get a Harry Potter bouquet. If you're, you know, if you love Doctor Who, this is what we're gonna do. So I, so I like the cross fandom piece. And so in, in what we talked about today, right, that would be those markets that are standing right next to what you're doing. Okay, who did I forget? Trish, what are you walking away with? You've already done it, maybe. Who did I miss? Who did I miss? Okay, Liz, what are you walking away with today? Well, the whole fan thing, I might have missed at the beginning because I couldn't be here. The Is that what you identify? It says top fan on Facebook. You know from an algorithm or are you... No, nope, you're you're going to define your own super fans, um, but but Facebook is doing it for you, yes, because that's kind of the way of the market. Um, but yes, a super fan is somebody who's really interested in who you are, what you are doing, and they're more than just interested; they're super interested. Okay. Um, so you you want a, a fan that what we talked about right was that you can be a fan of an iPhone by just buying an iPhone. But a super fan of an iPhone is going to learn all the stuff. They're going to go to groups. They're going to learn little videos. They're, they're, okay. they're far more engaged. So it's okay. somebody that's gone from passive to interactive. Great. That's my big takeaway. I love it. Thank I love it. Okay. Who else? Damien. 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 Okay. Um, I'm going to take away with just really spending more time honing in on my super fans. Yeah. Um, creating a space for them now to come to that's yeah. probably their own and the main thing is like it I always keep coming back with everything is how does the first question was how does the lens impact my business model that, that's where um, I need it's you to just focus. really spending a lot more time in the next you know 30 to 90 days making sure that the lens is showcasing what I needed to come across because I just am bad about taking pictures and bad about letting the lens see what I do. And when I do, the response is incredible, like when I just happen to do that. And so for some reason, I just never, I just don't. And well, I would shortcut that. Can I, can I give you a tip in mm -hmm. Is in your super fan list, make sure that the first ticket that goes out is to a photographer. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy. I have one that um, I birthed. That's a good, that's right. great. I have one that I birthed and like he was here over the holidays and I did all this stuff over the holidays and like he's like a super photographer and I never once said hey pull out this three thousand dollar camera I bought you yeah. and never one time yeah. said that to him yeah. And, so, so and you yeah so I just that's for me I feel like if more people see an aesthetic, then I would be with whatever it is that I do I just don't take the pictures I don't well and, and, and you don't have to, but you've got to find out how to, how to get that need met and, and just put the people in that bevy that, that you need that outcome from. Right. So, I was definitely? thinking, I was thinking about the postings that she did in the, uh, the Goblet Summer and other things for you. Storytelling. Yep. And the storytelling the, and the, the photos that you took yourself are wonderful, but the stories were amazing. So yeah. I think you're a great storyteller and the pictures that you, the images that you gave us to feel with that story were very um, intuitive, I guess. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about that real quick, Kathy, this planner, it's called the high performance planner. I do on every year. They're cheapest on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon. It's $30 at the bookstore. And they have different versions. I like the black one because you can fill in the dates. It's pretty intense. It's one of my favorites. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, yeah, it's pretty intense. And then I was going to say, type, to, it in, um, type it in so we can all know. Yep, I will. And then I was going to say to Danny, right now, these boxes that people are selling, um, Smack Shack is like doing an incredible job of it, especially during the pandemic. So basically, they put out, you can buy one of their meal kits. And you buy the meal kit, you pick it up, they send it out, or you can go and pick it up, and it's a recipe. And then the head chef gets on, on a Zoom, or uh, no, Facebook Live. They don't even use Zoom, Facebook Live. And he teaches, it's a quick hour, they have a drink and a stuff. If you had a bouquet box and I do flowers, I would buy those for me and my girlfriends to have a bouquet yeah. night over some wine or food Absolutely. or whether it's fake or real flowers or whatever yeah. it is, or a kid's party. I could see getting that for my nieces to do whatever not oh. could probably be a killer. Smack Shack, when they put it out, they sell out. Like if you're not there, when they put out their- when They drop, right? They drop, those tickets sell out and they keep, they just do like the same four recipes the whole pandemic they've been doing for the thing. I bought every one of their boxes without fail. Um, and I cook. So there's, a, there's, I just, when you said that, I wrote on here bouquet boxes. <laughs> oh, I love that. And it's perfect. Yeah, like playing dirt boxes, whatever it may be, you put it together. It's a simple kit for whether they're small or big or they know how to plant or have never plant with the instructions. You get on a quick live that they can keep coming back to at any time would be an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that for just the garden starting kits because those big uh, garden starting kits at um, Menards are $4. So you, you don't, you can pre-order really, you know, get them planting a garden. And, and mm -hmm. that can start as early as um, March. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's very good. Janet Mills, give us, give us, what are you taking away today? I like the show and tell aspect to, to um, feed the fans. So um, I can, for everybody here, I can like see what I'd want to what I'd want to see. So like for um, Kathy and the realtors, it would be like, here's someone who's going to sell their house. Here's the room. Which colors, Kathy, would you recommend? And then like the swatches and like kind of cross with different um, people. And then you get to see it. So, you, so then you can learn what happens by seeing it on the website. And so for um, myself, what I did last time, um, I take words like Christina does and make them into articles with photos and people are astounded. But I realized the um, accountant had no idea. So I sent her samples with the bill of before and after of what happened, what I did, and then she got it. So I think what I got for feeding from this session for feeding our fans is show and tell, like showing what you tell. Showing what you do, and um, yeah, I think I think that's mainly it. My cust clients are long term, like twenty four years, so um, I think also it's expanding how to ex expand exposure to have more fans. So that's it. I like it. I like it, and and I like the show and tell for everybody that's doing graphic or artwork. Or it's yeah, but also everyone here. Like I want to see what you do. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to challenge you, Janet Mills, to bring a show and tell for next time. Yeah. Uh, since we are your super fans. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we are your super fans. We should get first dibs at some of this. <laughs> okay. In our last five, three minutes, um, what, what did I miss? Was, it, was this valuable content to you? Yes. Yeah. And, and the... The thing that I really want you to take away from today, um, and I'm going to go back to just that quick screen share again, right? Uh, which is going to go back to that PowerPoint slide, right? Is I'm going to kind of work through them backwards, I think, uh, if it'll let me. Uh, whoops. Oh, it stopped. Hold on. I'll get back there. Um, Vicki, you should tell them what's coming up next time. Oh, I'd have to look it up. Do you know? 
Uh, I am focused uh, right here. You're right uh, here. Okay. Uh, yes, if you know what it is, please tell me. Uh, whoops. I am learning how to do something new here. I know. I just learned that it's, it's share screen. Well, no, I touched the, the thing. So here we are. Oh. Right? So again, right. Think about super fun for super fans, right? You're going to have to curate. You're going to have to come up with a plan. So you got to come up with the big before you can do the small. So I want you to remember that part. You've got the 11 questions, which is really the guide. So if we were doing this as an all day class, that's, those are the 11 questions you would have had to have answered throughout the day. Um, and so now that you've kind of talked to people about what you're doing, um, it, it kind of helps you go, oh, okay. You know, what are the events that you're doing? What, are you gonna focus on a firework event? What are your fans gonna take away? I think a lot of you would really benefit from a private group um, and, and how that private group would be uh, beneficial to you. Uh, we talked about firework events, but they can also be unique offers. They can also be, hey, before it becomes season, I love this Kathy for you for preseason. I love a special event to show me what's new. Um, Janet Mills, I love this for a chance for us to see the work that you do. We are all starved for coolness. Um, that uh, Jamie and I would look at that adjacent grouping, right? Who's next to you? You have a lot of partners that you're dealing with. So adjacent grouping would work for Kathy. It would work for Liz. It would work for both of the realtors that are in here, Sandy and uh, Tina. Um, I would, Tastemakers is a little bit further along. Um, Christina, you're probably gonna be in those categories very quick. But again, I want you to think about that as a drip right? Album drip, not album drop. So you're going to think of the big picture first. Who are the super fans? How are they going to help your business? How are they going to help you? You will gain so much from hanging with other people because you'll get the chance to be more creative. And, and that creative energy, right, is expansive energy. And expansive energy um, all of the time makes money, makes money. So, um, you know, think about your pace and, and what you're doing. Okay, I see that uh, we have some uh, pieces in here. So this is your chance to last type in, do you have any more questions for me before we sign off? And I think Karen has our content for next week, next month. The power of testimonials. Oh, I love that one, yes. From your fans. <laughs> yes. The power of testimonials, um, the reason that you're gonna like the power of testimonials is that we're also gonna show how you use testimonials, what are the legal rights around testimonials, um, how to track testimonials um, that are working for you. So testimonials would be a really good one um, and how to get them in different places and how to showcase them. So yeah, I, I, I've already written the class, so it's ready um, and you'll like it, you'll like it. Um, and. Uh, it also, if any of you are doing um, reviews, that if you're a reviewer, this will be very helpful for you as well. Because um, I also am one of the top reviewers for TripAdvisor. So we've had to learn a lot about how to review. So you'll get a little bit of that in there. Okay. Any uh, final questions for us today? Welcome to all of our new people. I, I want to welcome you back. And uh, have a great day. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Proud of you. Proud of you. Bye. 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 Bye.